And there's the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, which is reaffirming its support behind President Biden, though some caucus members have either called for Biden to drop out of the race or have said they are concerned. The caucus as a whole released a statement that reads in part, quote, we stand with President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. For the last year and a half, the Biden-Harris administration partnered with the Congressional Hispanic Caucus initiative to take the CHC on the road. Through that initiative, we have worked to empower Latino communities across the country. A meeting between Biden and the Congressional Hispanic Caucus is reportedly in the works, though no word yet, on when it is supposed to take place. A meeting did take place last night between Biden and members of the Congressional Black Caucus. Biden spoke with the group virtually for about 20 minutes and touched on issues such as uplifting black America and growing wealth, housing and taxing the ultra wealthy. Members reassured Biden they still support him amid his debate fallout. Here's how CBC Chair Congressman Stephen Horsford described the meeting. President uh, was clear that he is in this race uh, to win. We have one objective, and that is to win. And this president is fit and prepared to continue to serve. He's civil and he's experienced. The, the opposite side offers us nothing but chaos and extremism. Okay. To be clear, President Biden is our nominee. The vice president, Kamala Harris, is his running mate. They are the team that will ensure that we move America forward, and there will be no other nominee than President Biden. And, and later this morning, House Democrats are set to hold a caucus-wide meeting. Here's some of what key leaders and members are saying about Biden's candidacy ahead of the gathering. I made clear publicly the day after the debate that I support President Joe Biden and the Democratic ticket. My position has not changed. But that's Biden and the Democratic ticket. Do you support Biden on the ticket or just Biden and whatever the ticket is? Same answer. to the president over the weekend. I have spoken with him extensively. He made clear then and he has made clear since that he is in this race. The matter is closed. He had reiterated that this morning. He has reiterated that to the public. Joe Biden is our nominee. He is not leaving this race. He is in this race and I support him. I really do believe that the more uh, members of our caucus who speak directly to him, the more confident they will feel. So I've, I've encouraged the White House to make sure that the president does as much outreach as possible, or not the White House, but the campaign, that the president does as much re uh, outreach as possible. All right, listen, I'm not, I'm not here to give advice to my colleagues. They, they all have independent districts and things that they feel like they have to do. I do think that we should continue to have whatever conversations we need to have with our constituents, with our colleagues, we should have them in private. Well, you know, and, and, and Sam Stein, that the last comment uh, may have sounded, um, you know, like she didn't want to answer the question or try to have it both ways. But that is politics. And, and that's the thing that hit me this weekend when, when people said, oh, the House Democrats are House Democrats are going to go back and they're mm -hmm. going to push Joe Biden out. I start, I mean, you know, I was... Uh, Last week, a couple of, I think I've said here a couple of places, I, I was driving uh, my car windows down and, you know, I had some Democrats yell, hey, take it easy on Biden, Joe. And uh, I, you, you look on Twitter, which has been a hotbed of angry far yeah. right reactionaryism over the past five years or so. Uh, <laughs> it's changed, man. There are some angry Democrats out there. So. Um, all of that anecdotal, but I found in politics from a very early age, enough anecdotes usually lead to, uh, leads uh, to pretty good data uh, eventually. And I was just thinking about those House members. What are they hearing from their constituents? Chances are good. They've got a lot of pissed off constituents saying, yep. be loyal to the president of the United States. And perhaps that may be why we're seeing more House Democrats freeze. What, what have you heard in your reporting? 
Uh, same thing. And if, you're right. It's anecdotal, but eventually those anecdotes pile up to become something uh, close to empirical, right? And, you know, I talked to one House Democrat, I remember who went home over the July 4th break. He said he had, uh, you know, of all the conversations he had with voters there, Democratic voters, it was something like an 80-20 split of people who really thought uh, Biden was getting an unfair shake here and should not be pushed out of the race. More importantly, of the 80 percent, predominantly African-American women. And as you know, that is the bedrock constituency with the party. It is notable uh, that not a single member of the CBC has said anything about Biden leaving the race, uh, nor does it seem like they're going to. Um, it's maybe more notable, I think, that you have some of the progressives like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez coming out and saying they want to see Biden stick it out. I mean, he does not have much credibility among progressives, right? They've been uh, incredibly disheartened with his handling of the Israel-Hamas war. Uh, for uh, some of them to come out and say, look, stick with this guy, that is a huge help for him going forward. This doesn't mean he's in the clear. Uh, I think we're all very cognizant that, you know, there's incredible pressure on him to prove that he has what it takes uh, to bring the fight to Trump. Uh, there's right. going to be a lot of eyes on that Thursday press conference. Uh, uh, you know, just the timing of it yeah. is incredible. But if you're the Biden folks, this has gone about as well, the last two days, I would say, has gone about as well as you probably could have hoped, right? You've more or less called the party's yeah. bluff. You've made the outreach and you've seen the most important lawmakers that you need say, stick with right. Joe. Yeah, we're going to get to Richard Haas in a second, who has a decidedly different point of view than our own Mika Brzezinski. But, Gene, I want to circle back to you for a second. Yeah. And, again, I want to talk parallels. Mm -hmm. This is the same, I mean, for different reasons, but this is where Joe Biden was in 2020. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, people say, get out of the race. You're terrible at mm -hmm. this. You're too old. You're yeah. out of it. You can't win. How many times have we heard Joe Biden can't yeah. win? You can't win. He's going to have to step aside after 22. And again, there are people out there that are saying, uh, you know, I because I, I, you know, I get the emails. I'm just stating facts here. I, I'm mm -hmm. not saying what ought to be. I'm saying what is. And Gene, yeah. that's yeah. how it was in 2020. And then exactly. Jim Clyburn. And as I've said for years, black women uh, predominantly stepped up, saved Joe Biden's candidacy and helped him win in places like Wisconsin, Philadelphia, Atlanta, mm -hmm. places that mattered and Detroit. And here we are again, Gene, where mm -hmm. you look, black women, the Congressional Black Caucus, something different now, well, again, anecdotally, but this is going to bear itself out in polls, I suspect. Older white people in Wisconsin, uh -huh. Michigan, Pennsylvania rallying to a man that a lot of them are saying is being unfairly attacked. Look, um, you you and Mika were there um, that that morning in 2020, the morning yeah. of the of the New Hampshire primary, when uh, Joe Joe Biden came on Morning Joe, and he was done, right? He was done. He was finished. He was never going to yeah. be president. We all knew it. It was kind of in the air. Um, uh, nobody quite said that, but that's what was going to happen. It was it was finished, and then a couple of weeks later, he was the presumptive nominee. I mean, he was he was on his yeah. way. Um, and we saw then that Democratic voters uh, can be extremely sort of cold eyed and pragmatic. And and they made a decision led initially by Jim Clyburn and African-Americans in South Carolina. But Democrats across the country decided, no, this is this is the guy. This is our safest choice. This is the guy who can beat Donald Trump. And so they went with Joe Biden and he beat Donald Trump. Now, you know, um, uh, past performance does not guarantee future results, but that has been the pattern with Joe Biden. He gets ca counted out and he and he he somehow comes back. Um, that's kind of the judgment of a lot of pretty important uh, actors in this play right now that that Biden is still the safest um, the safest alternative but again things can change um, and and we're yeah. kind yep. of still in a day-to-day -day 
situation now, um, one more major slip by Biden, and exactly. that could open the floodgates, and that could create all these scenarios that that are kind of you know seem really wild and unlikely, but could unfold. So we'll just we'll we'll take it day by day for now. Right, and and that's really Gene just really underlined the the greatest concern with those. Who, who love Joe Biden, but believe he, he, he should step down because there is you know, one, more, mm. one more meltdown like we saw debate night uh, and it, it starts all over again and it's all over. And their concern is what happens if that comes in September? What happens if that comes in October? What happens if it comes on Thursday, this Thursday? If something like that happens at the press conference, this conversation begins anew. So... There is a right now. There is a mm -hmm. bit of a, a, a perilous, uh, a perilous march toward the nomination and beyond. Well hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more. September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.